Okay, so for me, this worked out quite well because the math was there. So once I got my masking tape put onto the graduation hat, I have my spacing, what did I say, 3 eighths from the end, all the way from top and bottom, 3 eighths. So there's a 3 eighths spacing all around here for what I'm doing. And I was using my metal ruler to get to like my halfway marks and all this. So it roughly came out to like 22, like 23 and something. But I roughed it to 22 centimeters. So I roughed it up to 11. And did my center lines all around there. I like using the metric part of it because even though you have a standard ruler, you can use that if you want and try to figure out what. Hey, look at that's for eight. Roughly eight and a half inches, which would be about four and a quarter. You can do it that way, measure it. Or you can be like me and be really fancy. He's a fancy dancy micrometer. So with me, I actually went through and measured from one side to let's see, from gold to gold section. Move across, have it set and just mark it. So you see it leaves a little scratch in it. So I'm gonna go here and put a mark and run a mark across it again too. And now we'll leave me my little goal section. Measure again. Actually, this is an old, old one. And measure from to the black. And every section can be kind of marked out for me as I need. So then I have my endpoint of where I need to be. So if I'm going from here to here, I can start by the gold. I should be there, and the black at the top. The black at the top there should be there. Then I can measure to this section here and mark it so I can have the center done as well. But the center is kind of marked. I don't know if you can see it, but it's there. So that's variations of measuring tools you can use. Rulers, or if you have a micrometer, use a micrometer. But in any case, to the sewing part. So I'm using a. I've been using size 13s and 15s for this for yeah all of it because that's what i use i don't use 11s most people use 11s on this and it doesn't give them the design detail or it being as intricate as it is some lines quite detailed like i said i'm using 16 colors for this i think that's kind of extreme but i don't know it's just naturally what i do so Using a tulip size 12 needle with double string, not at the end. As you can see, it's knotted. And I try to run it. Oh yeah. I got one of these pencils too, fabric pencils. You can set it and just run your line across. And that'll help with the, you have in your line, it lined up at the bottom. So with me, it just, I just know where the mark is, but you can put a mark here and hold it and just run it straight to have your line straight in the back. Some people tape it, but I don't know. I just don't use that. So in any case, I start from the back, bottom of the hat, come up, pull, I mean, the material in here is cardboard, so you can pull it, you can dent it a little bit, just to hide the knot. If you pull it hard enough, it actually pulls the knot inside the cardboard and hides it. So this is a quite easy material to be through, just because I know this is a cardboard. Uh, there's other hats they use, they probably use a cardboard, or you might use an awl to go through it. But in any case, if you can see that, do 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 do. Oh, come on, focus. I do go a slight or upward angle, then going down. Like I do on my other, like my regular beadwork, I do for doing something kind of like, like this kind of edging. 
I would go down and tighten up because it's fabric and it gives. But since this is like cardboard and just a piece of polyester over top of it, there's really no um, leeway in, in it being... What do I say that? There's no give in it. It is what it is. Unlike the fabric and the pillow and the leather, it kind of squishes. This doesn't squish as well. So I kind of go upwards just to help the beads sit a little better. It's better to have extra beads and less beads. So right now I'm putting on this gold color. You can see me picking up the beads. I mean, I have extra. That's why I have so many mini colors laying around. So doing one solid color, if you have one Hanks, this will go like way faster. But I have my gold in tube. In a tube, and it's not. I had to pick it up. So I kind of line it up, make sure it's pushed all the way against, all the way back, run it forward, and wherever it lines up with that blue tape, is where I take off the extra beads. Pull it off. Same thing. So you want to go through the cardboard. I mean, like you know, cardboard, there's like two sections into it. It's corrugated, and then you can kind of wiggle it between it. And still, you want to do, 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 have your your needle go at an angle instead of going straight up. You want to have it go across so it gets you set up for your next row of beads. So just like so. I mean, it's not gonna feel tight. It's still gonna come loose as you go along, and you pull it tighter, tighter. It will cinch up the beads. Like I said, if you have it on Hanks, you just pull through. Actually, that's an ugly bead there. You can pull your beads onto your needle way faster. If you're just doing solid colors, and yeah, I would probably be done by now. But this isn't the case. So push it down. So it lines up with your line at the bottom. Go to the front where it lines up with the blue tape and take everything extra off. And just set it aside. You don't want to put it next to it here. So to, the way it is here, you don't want to put your needle right next to it because then it'll push your beads over. So you want to kind of adjust it towards the center a little bit. Ooh. So if you can see that, I'm going to slide it over on the beads itself. So on the back side, I'm kind of going upwards on it and at an angle as well towards the front. So hopefully those two angles do help. And yeah. We had to go through this quite a few times. I'm using Tulip because I know Tulip are a little stronger than the regular John James and the other needles. This one needle here has actually gone through and did all this through the cardboard and everything. And it's still pretty straight with me bending on it and doing everything. Even though they are quite expensive, they are pretty well worth it. Especially doing something like this. So as you see, pulls through on the back side. It lines up fairly well. But doing color and doing all this, this is where you would have to design it yourself or figure out a pattern. For me, I just kind of winged it and guessed it at, guessed at it. Guessed it at it. I don't know. I'm not good at talking. But it's two of each color, the two white, two yellow. And if you're using seed beads, this is where it's difficult because as you know, seed beads aren't exactly 
the same color, or not same color, but the same size. There's like size variations in each color batch. So I can get like a thicker orange or a smaller red or really thin black. So if the mine looks pretty uniform. It's, it takes a lot of effort of me sorting through the beads and make sure the beads are roughly the same size. So two beads color except for the center color. For me, just be using 13s. So I have two yellow, two white, two yellow, two orange, two dark orange, and three and three reds, as you can see. The center one has three because it helps it blend a little more, as you can see from the side. So each one of those has three, everything on the top has two. Just so it doesn't look awkward. I don't have a weird center line that tries to line up one bead in the middle. So I kept the ends one solid color so it transitions a little better. So like I said, put it through, angle, upwards. This is where everything gets caught. Even your thread gets caught in the center. It's tedious, it's time consuming, but it needs to be done. So with me, it doesn't line up exactly. The corners don't really do that. But that's where my line starts. So this part stays in line as well. So I'll work across a few times. Do to do, do. Just doing that across. If you're doing one solid color, it's way easier to do because it's one color and you just do is line up on top and bottom, push it through. Just like these here. This won't this little section took me like five minutes. This section took me an hour just because I had to do add every single color, make sure the color is right in the front and back side and was set in the right place. So doing one strand of this will take me a few seconds. This will take like oh, two minutes for me to do. As you can see, if I do the next color section, then. Backwards, maroon, dark orange, light orange, all the way down to yellow. So it takes me that long to get that many colors onto a piece. And well, let me get back to this real fast. Okay, so you're working with cardboard, right? This is corrugated, one side, the other side's kind of flimsy and does whatever. One side's really more more stiff. So you gotta remember that's how the material is in here as well. So one side that does give and conform to itself, and the other side that doesn't really want to do that. So if you just fill your piece, you can fill on this side. This is where I'm working with the rib section. And obviously this one here, the ribs are way more, they're not really structured that, that well to be holding a lot of weight. So this wall collapse, but the one inside your 
graduation hat will be a little more stiff and won't give as much. So even though a design works on one side, where it rolls over really nice. So this side here, it does tend to roll over really nice. And then on the other section, it's more square and boxy. So be aware of that. Depends on what side you start on. Your pattern will be different and you'll have to adjust for that because one side will kind of squish down and roll with it. The other side will stay really firm and won't be as forgivable as the other two sides. So that's what I'm working on right now. It's not as forgivable, so it's leaving me gaps in my work. So even though I don't want to do anything, I kind of had to squish it. So getting a little more tapered edge and I actually use some small beads in this. So like I said, the beads, bead size in this does make a difference. As you can see, these are a little more consistent. That size not really, looks consistent because I'm kind of sorting through everything. And this side is not so consistent because the bead size are different. As you can see, the white and yellow are two different size. So in turn, it kind of pushes the beads down a little more. So I could fix that by adding one more white. And so then that'll close up that gap there. So these little adjustments, even though you're not going to be seeing it as much. If it's a bigger bead, like 11, then you can probably see it with the smaller 13s. It's not going to be as noticeable. So it depends on what side you do it on. For me, it's underneath it. But this is the front part of the cap. So. Well, hopefully that answers some questions, but I'll go along a little more if I have like some other tips and stuff. But I think this is it for now. And this is a long, short, quick explanation. But I'll come back around when I get to the corners, maybe tomorrow, this evening maybe. Depends on how far I get on this. Because the corners, I don't even know how to do it yet, but hey, I'll figure it out. I've seen how it's done, it's just going to take some trickery on my part. <laughs>